By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my mono green deck. And I'm the player on the left, obviously, Timmy. And the player on the right is Anna, and he's playing with The Beast. A deck based on Guardian Beast. The... Uh, Creature that works very well with uh, artifacts from the Arabian Nights. Let's have a look. Pendlehaven and there's a Lanora Elves for me. Obviously playing some mana ramp, playing a green deck. And there are no cards there from Anna. And I'm playing an Ice Storm on his only land and passing turn. It seems that he's stuck on land here. So this could be at least an, an easy start for me dealing 4 damage here. He's on 16. He has to discard. This seems to be a very one-sided match here well i should say this first game and there is a giant growth so i'm doing seven damage because with the pendle haven i can pump my elf he's already on nine has to discard again and we're attacking pumping with the uh other mistress factory i just played meaning he's on four and he has to let this one go so let's continue to game number two game number two is about to start and after that game one that wasn't really a game at all i'm curious to see see more of anna's deck so hopefully he can draw some mana here so let's go to turn one anna's on the play playing a library here so that's a great start for him but i'm stripping it perfect and pass turn again so let's see basically starting over here Okay, this is impressive. There is a, an underground C, Mox Pearl, Mox Sapphire, into... Now he plays a Demonic Tutor, has the Mox Sapphire still. So probably, exactly, Ancestral Recall, drawing three new cards. Wow. And I wonder what I can do against all this brute force. Let's see. Playing Mono Green, probably playing a Force here. <laughs> and I'm playing a Scavenger Folk. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to play Moxes and um, Ancestral Recalls. I'm going to play Scavenger Folk. And this is kind of funny because I, I, I told Anna that he's not holding his own hand. I don't know if you know the art of Scavenger Folk, but I advise you to have a look at it right now. And he's not holding his own hand. He's, he's taken something from the hand, actually. But uh, have a look at the art yourself and you'll see. So passing turn here. Scavenger Folk could become a problem. Uh, I actually play with four in this build because there's so many artifacts. And there's the swords. Nothing I can do about it. So the scavenger goes. He passes turn. And there's a pendle haven. Obviously working great with a lot of one ones. And there's a lawn where elves. Oh, this is brutal. This is brutal. I just wanted to say that I think I'm doing pretty well considering. But I think this Mind Twist is pretty much the end. Just playing the Giant Grove there just because I can. It's better than to discard it. Um, but it's not really going to help me. So top decking right now at the moment. And okay, I found some. Oh, this is pretty good. I found a Sylvan Library. So this could get me back filling my hand. I'm on 21 so I can spend some life. And there's a Disenchant. And this is a problem with these kind of decks. You know, they have all the answers. It's, it's, it's very much like the deck. It's not the deck, obviously, but it's it's the same in terms of having the answers. Uh, playing with white, obviously giving you four swords, addition chance. Here you see the, the Jadum Tome um, to draw some cards. Haven't seen a Guardian Beast yet. Uh, being able to pump my Elf here with the Pendle Haven and pass turn. But I think this game is, is pretty much over with already, despite the fact I'm on 21. Maybe that's what we're discussing right now. Because after that mind twist and disenchant on the Sylvan, I mean, that's just brutal. And there's a Guardian Beast. So great little card means that my Scavenger Folk can no longer destroy artifacts. And I think what many people, or at least I didn't realize at first, is that the Guardian Beast, besides being, you know, very powerful with his ability, it's also a 2-4 creature. So it's hard to get rid of. Okay, and there's a natural selection, so hopefully that can kind of get me back in the race. I always feel that natural selection um, kind of needs to be the green ponder, meaning that, you know, at least let me draw a card. I don't think it would be overpowered in this uh, meta. 
but it is what it is at least it's a card to kind of sort your cards and of course the shuffle effect and that's why i enjoy i like playing it uh with the sylvan library like when you're stuck on three dead cards you can play natural selection and, and do a shuffle and there's a nice winter factory there's a tap for four and there's an icy manipulator okay that's pretty good oh no he's playing a mana drain and and uh, you know again it's it's what i'm talking about it's it's a deck with all the answers here in this in in, in that case you could almost say it's it's the deck but then with guardian beasts and i don't think that's a bad choice actually because the guardian beasts uh protect your factories which is basically an important win con uh, of the original of the deck because while while the guardian beast is still untapped all your artifacts are oh no because it's an artifact creature okay so it's not going to work on that um, but it is interesting of course to kind of experiment with guardian beast i think it's a very strong card and at this point it's mainly played in troll disco uh there you see me trying to play another sylvan but there's complete control uh with the disenchant again so he's he's being able to very successfully just counter and disenchant all my meaningful cards here and leaving me hopeless with a single lunar elf i'm on 14 he's on 17. there's another card And there's a Black Lotus. Doesn't really need it, but why not put it on the field anyway? Has enough mana. Maybe a huge Brain Geyser. He's actually cracking it here. And yeah, play, playing a Brain Geyser. He has all the cards that he that he wants right now. And I'm just being overpowered here. Literally being overpowered by the restricted card and uh, cards and the power cards here. There's li little I can do. It's a David and Goliath right now. And I don't feel so guilty anymore about winning that first game now. And uh, regrows on the Demonic Tutor. Plays the Demonic Tutor. And plays a Time Walk for an extra turn. Why not? Go ahead. And I wonder if, um, <clears throat> if I'm not just going to uh, scoop my cards here. Let's see. Oh, and this is great. This is great. Activates the... Uh, Chaos Orb. Now, obviously, the, the Chaos Orb is indestructible because of Guardian Beast. So this is a well-known combo and a really nice one. One that I really like, showing the strength of Guardian Beast. And, um, yeah, I have to scoop here. There's there's no way for me to get back into this game. So we're going to continue to game number three. Moving on to game number three. And hopefully, I'm not going to see a mind twist. So, Anna, please keep the mind twists to yourself. Hopefully... There's only one in the deck, so... Ooh, that's nice. My second turn, there's a Sylvan Library, and Anna has already played two Moxen and an Underground Sea. Adding a City of Brass. Tapping here for four, and playing the Guardian Beast. And I'm looking at my top three cards. And I'm taking one extra, going to 16. I'm putting down a Forest. Playing three, playing an Ice Storm, and playing an Honest City of Brass. And he's attacking me for two, so I'm going down here. I'm going to 14. And there's a Mishra's Factory as well. So maybe I should have waited a little bit with the Ice Storm, although the City of Brass gives him access to his white mana, so that was probably the reasoning behind taking care of that first. And there's a Chaos Orb. Now I wish I had the Guardian Beast on my side. That would have helped a lot. Mm, am I going to activate it? I am. Okay, so let's uh, see what I'm going to choose. Is it the Guardian Beast or is it going to be Mishra's Factory? And let's put that in a slow-mo here. Here comes the flip. Boom, and it's the Mishra's Factory. I think I chose the Mishra's Factory here because it kind of takes away a land as well. So in a way, it's a double advantage, taking away a land and a creature threat. Of course, it's Estral Recall. Okay, fantastic. 
<laughs> yeah, he's showing the wrong card here. Uh, playing a planes, playing an extra mox. So land doesn't really seem to be a problem here. And attacking with the beast again. I'm down on eight, which makes it difficult to activate my Sylvan. So perhaps I should have gone for the Guardian Beast. What would you have done? Um, let me know in the comments below if you would have chosen for the Guardian Beast with this flip or for the uh, for the Mishra's Factory. So I've got five mana, maybe playing a Cockatrice. Yes, playing Cockatrice. So that's a 2-4 Flying Thicket Basilisk. Uh, meaning that everything that becomes blocked by the Cockatrice or blocks the Cockatrice gets killed. But in this case, the Cockatrice gets killed by the Swords to Plowsiers, at least giving me two life, maybe enabling me to, to draw an extra card here. Oh, and look, I'm blocking, I'm tapping for mana, so it becomes a 4-4, four, four, and it still deals damage. Because Swedish rules play according to the modern magic rules, so no mana burn, and also the uh, when you tap as a blocker, it still deals damage. Because many of us probably remember that that didn't used to work like that back in the day. So I'm taking an extra card now. Or not. I'm not taking an extra card. Oh, I thought I... Okay. Playing a giant spider. Here we go. A 2-4 giant spider. But there's the mana drain that we saw earlier. And I believe I attacked as well with the Lunar Elf, so he goes down to 18, has more than enough. Using the Brain Geyser, so using the extra mana of the Mana Drain for his Brain Geyser. That's a classical combo. And it's always nice to see when somebody succeeds doing that. Playing another Mishra's Factory, playing another Swords there. Going to 11. So the Swords to Plowsiers are helping me a little bit, and like I said before, I think we're going to take that advantage by using the, the 4 life. From the Sylvan. And there Anna has to discard. Throwing away a disc. And disc obviously has great synergy um, with Guardian Beast. And here I'm doing a why, uh, why I've put the Natural Selection in. Is when I have a Sylvan Library I want to play the Natural Selection. Because it gives me that shuffle effect. So I know that my cards are not top. Uh, and I need like two really good cards here. Because I think I can draw two cards max. Maybe, you know, even a third, but that would set me back eight life and I would be on three. So hopefully I'm lucky here and I can find something good. And I'm not paying that extra life. Playing an icy manipulator. And passing turn. Now obviously he has a hand full of spells and he has a white mana. So I'm really expecting a disenchant here. But I can still activate my... Icy Manipulator to at least tap his uh, factory, making sure that I don't get any damage in this turn. And there's a book. So that's nice that there's no disenchant yet. And here, activate his fac fac factory, and as a response, I tap it down. So this is not too bad it could be worse but then again he has two mana open still i know he plays with blue power okay so not no time walk as well it's pretty good and I still have that life buffer so as soon as i see a useful card i can take it still and i think my tactic here is a little bit okay i'm just if if my useful cards in the top three i'm just going to take one because i'm going to tap out anyway so i'm playing a giant spider here and i'm playing a scavenger folk interesting so i decide not to, ooh, and this is nice. And he's showing this card because this is not a normal terror. This is a summer magic terror. So very nice card from Anna's collection here. And he's destroying my scavenger folk and also um, destroying my ability. Well, I've done it myself because I'm tapped out. I no longer have the ability to activate the icy. And that's a risk you take. I mean, I kind of know if, if scavenger folk can stay in a full turn without guardian beast on the field, I can still uh, destroy one of his artifacts. So let's see if, if Anna can take advantage of this. So he's drawing an extra card. There's a disenchant. And is he going to choose for the Icy or for the Sylvan? So he's going for the Icy. 
and leaving those two mana up to counter probably, or at least giving me the idea that he can counter. He still has a handful, and the Jadum Tome is really not helping. And I play a Cockatrice here, and there's a counter spell. And here you can see the, the disadvantage, by the way, of, of a Scavenger Folk versus, uh, for instance, a Crumble, because Scavenger Folk is slow. It needs to be in there in the game for a whole turn. So there's a Disenchant on the Sylvan. We didn't do any sideboarding, by the way, because then I probably would have boarded in Crumbles. And there's another Giant Spider. So at least I have four Giant Spiders, or two Giant Spiders on the field. And there's a sorts. And there's another book activation there. And now you see Anna is, is slowly um, taking control of the match again. I really kind of needed that Sylvan to to kind of keep up with him and with his Jadum Tome, with his Ancestral Recall and stuff. There's a Guardian Beast. I'm not really worried about it right now. The only, the biggest disadvantage of the Guardian Beast is that I can no longer attack. And I feel I should have taken that extra card earlier from the Sylvan. Just to get some cards in my hand and to, to go quicker through, through the rest. Um, through the rest of the cards. And here's a Winter Orb, and you're kind of wondering why is he playing that out. This is a simple reason that if he activates his factory, at least he has to um, he has to think a little bit about it. And there's a Transmute Artifact. So he has to sacrifice his book. And of course he looks up the Chaos Orb, because with the Guardian Beast he has an infinite Chaos Orb machine going on. And I guess this is really where you can see the difference between like the deck and a Guardian Beast build like this one. It has a lot of similar control elements, but obviously this um, Transmute Artifact in combination with the Chaos Orb and the Guardian Beast is just, it's such a winner, it's such a winner. And I have to, I have to give it up here, I have to scoop because, you know, playing against an Orb like that, there's no victory. So Anna, congratulations. Great once again to see one of your combo decks in action. And I believe that um, that Guardian Beast is really a strong creature, and we're seeing we're seeing it gain popularity now thanks to Troll Disco decks, and and maybe these builds will happen more often. I think it's a card with a lot of untapped potential. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more, just click on the playlists on the screen or visit the channel and have a look around. For now, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.